ranking member of parliament Vicent Opon Asamoa, who is also MP for the Mount West, highlighted the urgent need for the government to prioritize issues relating to coastal devastation. He emphasized the importance of taking proactive measures to protect the coastline from further destruction, warning that failure could lead to irreparable damage. If you had a sea was about to take long test from where we are standing here. And if care is not taken, we don't put in resources. In the next year or two, we may end up losing all the structures here. And you know that at least we, there's an eye opener. There's a private developer who is has spent about 500,000 Ghana cities to protect his property. So uh, at least the lessons we should learn from this is that we don't have to be spending so much to protect property. It is the issue of the will of these political actors. Once we have the will, at least there's a way that we'll be able to use. Not the huge infrastructure that we see elsewhere, but at least the little we can put together. And I'm also, I've also learned that we can do some dredging. We don't have to look for private uh, uh, people to go into dredging. Government can put resources which we, we can acquire our own machines. We go to hydrology, they have a lot of good technical people. They can supervise for this work to be done. And I think it should be the will of the government. And then look at how people are suffering here. And I believe that uh, governments will have to take the situation here seriously. And after we'll be able to dredge and secure the land, I'm sure a lot of private investors will be even interested in coming here. Chairman of the Wilson Housing Committee, Isaac Kwame Esiema, echoed a somewhat sentiment lamenting the extent of damage caused by erosion along the beaches. Uh, that provides oversight of the Ministry of Western Housing and that is the ministry responsible for coastal protection. We were here about two years ago as a committee and we came as a result of the devastation that took place here the tidal waves and the erosion that had destroyed properties and damaged so many houses here. When we came, in fact, some of us were defunded. We were astonished because of the revelations in these communities. We went to about three constituencies at a time. We came to Keta here. We saw that some communities had been swept away by sea erosion. We were very much disturbed. We went to Parliament, we gave our report to Parliament. And here, let me commend the members of Parliament here in these three constituencies that we last visited. So, for me, we are here as a follow up of that visit. And about actions government has taken since our last visit. We have been briefed by the Hydro Authority group here. They are here. That's the Ghana Hydrological Authority, a body that has been created to ensure that we have secured and a safe environment around our coastal areas and also to check flooding in general. We have been assured by the Ministry that and indeed Parliament is aware of a loan of about $150 million that has been secured for this project and other communities. When we came here we asked for a full report, feasibility report of this area. An amount of $10 million guarantees was granted. I'm told the report is ready. So all that we ask for as committee is that let us expand that action. Let us fast track whatever we are doing to save lives, save properties. That's what we, are, we ask for because the situation has become very unbearable from what you can see. And we are seeing the rains. This is a period. The season is here again. Let us act and act fast so that we can save lives and properties. So the committee is very much concerned. And that is why we have taken this follow-up visit. From here we go to other communities. That they went to another community, the parliament there, and some revelations came up that three communities had been swept away by sea erosion. Indeed, it's very sad. You see, we need to secure and protect our historical heritage. Along the coastal areas is where we have our forts and castles. We can't sit down to allow all this to be destroyed, damage. When we do that, we kill our culture. We kill our heritage. We kill everything. A member of parliament for who West 
Emmanuel Bedra also voiced his concerns regarding the issue, calling for swift action to address the challenges faced by coastal communities. So, yeah. so we are here at the instance of the Right Honourable Speaker. Uh, three of our colleagues made a statement on the floor of the House. That's Honourable Jifa Gomashi, Honourable Kwame Sepe, and Honourable Jujoli Gakpe. Uh, about the devastating effect of what the, the sea line is doing to their community. And the speaker has referred the committee on Western Housing to make a visit, come here to see, uh, and then write a report so that we will know what to do. Uh, let me also put on record that before we went on recess, the uh, West African Resilient Fund um, released through, West, through the World Bank, 150 million, which was approved and passed in Parliament. And so we, we, we asked the hydro department how far they've gone with them, and they were told that they are securing consultants to start the work. Uh, we've also been informed that GOG government, government of Ghana will take over uh, Berkusu phase two to complete it. Um, the figures given out, about 84 million for eight kilometers, was on the higher side. I think that uh, considering the entirety of the coastal line, that money could have been used to do more work, more of the coastal reclamation than doing a scenario work. In fact, we need a scenario work. But if you have a devastating effect of the coastal shoreline to communities and destroying homes, why don't you prevent the sea from you know, further devastating than building a scenario work? And so we may interrogate it. Uh, this is news to us. We just heard it today that $84 million has been for, has been has been secured by GOG for the eight kilometers of project, which I think, as a quantity of here, is on the higher side. Okay, so last, last, last. What assurance do you have for the people on the that's well, the well, representatives who well, are that, going to speak on there? That, that is why we are here. We are here basically to have our first hand information. And then when we came back to parliament, it is for us as you know people from the region to push for the release of that money. Once that money is released, we can assure the people of Keta, uh, Keta staff, as well as the Anglo, Anglo constituency, that their fair share of national development will come to them. But thank you. Because what I have done, I've seen that it's helping me. So if we can similar thing or some defined simple, 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 simple one, okay. before maybe if the what is happening in uh, Benin and other places? But for now, I mean, when this little little ones, so that. Uh, as Ghana grapples with the adverse effects of climate change, including rising sea levels and increased coastal erosion, urgent action is needed to safeguard vulnerable coastal communities and mitigate long-term impact of environmental 